for the very first time, Zach Arnett, defensive coordinator at Mississippi State, going into his second season. Zach, really appreciate uh, a little bit of your time this afternoon. After the craziness of everything related to last season, not having a spring practice, being part of a new staff, having uh, a, a year with limited people in the stands, ups and downs on the field, a crazy off season. Does it finally feel like you guys can just focus on football and it's going to feel normal? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's always good to get to chat, you know, spring practice preview and uh, talk about how hard the guys have been working. But, no, I think you're right. Uh, this feels like you're kind of getting – back to some sense of normalcy the way things were prior to you know when COVID hit last year obviously you know you have off-season workouts uh, winter conditioning and then you you start ramping up for spring practice and, and this this is about this time last year that all the stuff hit and so we weren't able to go into spring practice and so obviously there's a, a big buzz and excitement around the place to know that we're going to get these 15 15 practices in in retrospect how big a deal was it that you didn't get those 15 practices last year I don't know. I mean, obviously, you know, it's always good. It's additional reps, but, um, yeah, we weren't the only, we certainly weren't the only team in the country who, who missed out on. I know we had a lot of buddies in the business who they might have got a couple in or, you know, three or four. Um, so I was kind of surprised. I was kind of thinking now uh, things changed with the vaccine going into dis- distribution and stuff, but I kind of thought every, every school in the country a year ago, I thought, well, you plan on spring practice being the start of the first day of the spring semester so every team can guarantee they get it in. But uh, hmm. obviously, due to advancements, that has changed. And I think everyone's excited again to be getting back to kind of the normal calendar. Talk to me a little bit, if you don't mind, about coaching philosophy on the defensive side. I mean, there, there are all different ways that guys coach it, the 4-3, the 3-4, the 4-2-5. You came up in the, the Rocky Long school of, of kind of defensive mindset, and it's not a system that, at least at the base level, a lot of people employ. What, what is it that makes the 3-3-5, when it's done right, successful, and, and why philosophically, other than the fact that you played in it and, and coached it with him, do you like this system? You know, I... I guess I'm going to maybe not argue with you for a sec, but uh, I, I don't okay. think the, the scheme you run, the guys on the field are a, I don't think that's philosophical. So, for instance, right, some teams are uh, base 4-3, you know, 4-2-5, 3-4, 3-3-5. In my opinion, the philosophy of every coach, I don't care who it is and what they do, their, their philosophy is to get the best 11 players on the field. So, number one, that's, uh, you know that's that's the core philosophy. Find out who your best eleven players are, and and then you got to find out who your best twenty two are, right? Because you got to have backups who can who can go in there and not miss a beat. But you try to find out who your your best two deep are, and then and then you you adapt your scheme to fit who those guys are. Some teams it's four three, uh, some teams it's four two five three four, and we we happen to be a three three five. Now. Uh, philosophically, right? We, we, we like to be multiple, you know, multiple stunts and fronts, uh, vary the looks up for the opposing offense. So I, you know, I happen to believe that our structure lends itself to that. Um, and then to be honest with you, I, I mean, I'll just speak frankly, I, I don't know how many teams are, are operating out of a true four, three and three, four structure right now with the way with they with the, uh, prevalence of the spread you know and everyone getting multiple receivers on the field and, and spreading out sideline to sideline even if they're a four three you know one of those linebackers has to be able to play like uh in the slot like either you know sometimes we call them a nickel safety yeah. so I, I think you're seeing five defensive backs on the field as the base defense for almost every defense in the country uh it's just you know how they configure six front guys around, you know, four, two look, three, three look. And so, um, but I think philosophically, I, I, most defensive guys are figure out who your best players are, get those guys on the field. And then before any type of scheme, you know, what you do schematically on the field, it, it comes down to getting your guard, you're getting your guys to play with fanatical effort, have a relentlessness chasing the football and, and being tough and physical. And, Fortunately, there's a long tradition of that at this university on the defensive side, and so 
I'm just the one fortunate enough to get to be here uh, working with these guys right now. So, so if personnel wise, your base three three five didn't fit what you had in in terms of dudes, would you kind of change up what that front six looked like? Am I hearing you say that right? Oh yeah, I mean, why why would you have a you know why would you not have your best players on the field, right? I mean, that's yeah. you know, yes, coaching coaching is developing guys and uh, maximizing their potential, but a lot <laughs> some of the best coaches you figure out who your best players are and then let them go do what they do best. Um, so if we happen to, you know, through recruiting or just the way things work out, if you, if you end up getting a, you know, a, a run of really good players at a certain position group, well, you're not going to have one of them sitting on the bench just because you're a strict adherent to, you know, whatever sure. structural scheme you're in, you're going to get your best players on the field. It don't matter whether it's a four D lineman or six DBs, who cares? You get your best players on the field. Hey, Coach Brian, hey, Dad here. You know, I think it makes it a little easier to do your job sometimes when you have all SEC guys at, at each level, and I think you do. I, you know, I love Jaden Crumbly. I think I've talked to you about him a few times. I think Aaron Brule may be the most underrated player in the conference. You've got two great corners there in Forbes, Forbes and Emerson. Who are some of the underrated guys that maybe didn't have a, a big splash last year that you could see taking a step forward, or maybe you've already seen it through the offseason workouts? Well, I think the first thing is we're going to need some guys. We're going to need some guys to take a step forward and make a jump because we lost some really productive seniors, you know, uh, up front. Like you said, I think I think Crumity was one of the most underrated unsung guys there was because all he all he does is show up every day with a smile on his face and go about his work and uh, and be really consistent. He might be the most consistent player on the defense, um, but you know, you know, last year you, you're losing the production from from Marquis Spencer and and Kobe Jones, and so obviously we're going to need some front guys to, to take a jump. You know, lose an arrow at linebacker, obviously your middle linebacker, the defense flows through him, you know, gets everyone lined up, makes the calls, and then his career production. Um, those are some big shoes to fill. I have really high hopes for uh, Nathaniel Watson. Um, he, he played at every position at linebacker last year. Uh, he was kind of the, the Swiss Army knife that could knew it all and, and could do everything. He ended up having to go into the Missouri game. You know, Errol got uh, got ejected for a textbook tackle on the second play of the game. <laughs> and so, uh, no, Buki had to play the rest of the game at Mike there. And so, I think he's that got him some valuable reps. And uh, really excited for for what he's going to do now that it's his time. And then in the back end, you know, a lot of the guys you mentioned Forbes. You know, he had some freshman moments, but he's better because of them, and he's going to be a I, I'm telling you, he's going to be an NFL football player. Obviously, everyone knows about Martin and how uh, how good of a cover corner he is, and, and both those guys are willing to show up and run support in, in the safety position. Uh, we had some guys who, you know, like, like I said, a lot of people probably died last year, and and they probably took some lumps at times, but they got a lot of, a lot of experience and, and made some plays and really improved throughout the course of the season, and I'm excited to see that competition because now, you know, we lost some guys to, to season-ending injuries, Early in the season, or even in fall camp, before they even got a chance to play. Now you got those guys back. You got the guys who who played the majority of the snaps. Now that's a really uh, healthy room. That there's going to be a heck of a competition for for those spots here in spring practice. Zach Arnett, defensive coordinator at Mississippi State, on your radio on the Farm Bureau phone line. Coach, only about a minute or so left, and and I don't know if there's enough time to unpack this. When when Mike Leach first calls and says, "Hey, I want you to be my defensive coordinator," is there any hesitation based on his reputation and what he does offensively, knowing what you might be asked to do defensively, being his DC? No, not at all. When you get a chance to work for work for Mike Leach, as successful he's been, and at every place he's ever been, you get a chance to go work for him, learn under him, and then work work with an offense who's known for, you know, putting up points the way they do. Uh, that's a no-brainer decision. And then the one thing I don't think a lot of people, you know, know is even this year, uh, Coach Leach's offense is usually such a high completion percentage, and and the way they execute and operate on the offense. They're actually typically very good in, in time of possession because, you know, the way the quarterbacks, and you saw it with Will, the way they can, you know, read yeah. the defense, distribute the ball, uh, it, that extends a lot of drives. And so 
I, I think this year, I could be wrong, but I think we finished third or fourth in the, in the conference time of possession. And obviously, when, when our offense has a ball, that means the defense is over there with their butts on the bench. And so, uh, you know you're not giving up yards and points at that moment. <laughs> That's uh, that's a good way to look at it. Zach, really appreciate a, a few minutes of uh, your time this afternoon, some insight, and I uh, know you guys are all looking forward to the start of spring practice. We are as well. Thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. Yep, thank you very much for having me. That is Zach Arnett, defensive coordinator, going into his second year in Starkville. Defense was pretty good a season ago, or at, at times was really good, and boy, they had some players. See what it looks like rolling into 2021. Sports Talk Mississippi.